My name is John McCoy, and I'm the executive director with the Organization for the Prevention of Violence. I think in a lot of cultures, a lot of societies, it comes down to injustice, right, and infringements on human rights. If, if you look at um, countries, say, like Northern Ireland, and, and where do the troubles really come from? If you say you go back to the 60s, they had a civil rights movement shaped and influenced by what was going on in the United States, uh, specifically um, by Martin Luther King. That peaceful attempt to create rights for a segment of the population that didn't have access to jobs, um, didn't have access to political power, uh, and was really stuck in, in poverty and powerlessness for so many centuries. And when that sort of injustice uh, and attempt at, at, at you know, building a civil rights movement, a peaceful civil rights movement around it, was met with violence, was met with opposition, and was met with an inability to reach goals, um, that's when things took a turn. And uh, that's not to justify what, what happened, but I think it's a good indication of what we see in a lot of places in the world where these issues bubble up, civil liberties aren't respected, uh, minority rights aren't respected, and uh, I think and often this is the, the driver of, of anger, of fear, um, and division. The internet's kind of like the Wild West still, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's uncontrolled, and, and there's something that is beneficial to that and how unstructured it is, but it also has hazards attached to it as well, right? Because it creates opportunities for people with um, ulterior motives, bad actors, those who want to spread hate and division specifically for their own purposes because of how they want to see the world um, or how they want to reinforce their own power. The internet creates an environment in which vulnerable people can be uh, brought in and into uh, extremism or hateful rhetoric, especially those you know who don't have positive connections in their day-to-day -day life, and they're lonely and they're vulnerable. And the internet can offer a sense of community. It can offer a sense of identity, um, especially for young people. You know, as they're trying to figure out. Who am I? Where do I fit in this world? Where do I fit in this society? A big question for us in terms of how do you prevent online hate or how do you protect young people? How do we safeguard them from the ills that exist on that? Um, you know, I, I think that really comes down to the root of, of what we're trying to do here in a modest way with this, with this project and with these, these young leaders. They have a real tangible understanding of what that environment looks like, uh, what it feels like to use it, um, what they experience when they encounter uh, hatred or division or, or extremism, you know, and, and they can relay that to people who have power and resources, which is something that youth lack, right? They, they don't have access to those things. They maybe don't have the level of life experience that we have, but they have the energy, they have the ideas, and I think it's incumbent upon us to recognize, you know, where are our, our mutual strengths and how do we assist youth in harnessing those ideas and that energy and providing the kind of resources that they need to engage in real prevention work. Um, and I don't see a lot of efforts to meaningfully do that, so that I think that's why I'm particularly interested in and, and happy with what's taking place here with this initiative. The most important thing is that we need to find ways to build bridges in our society beyond just our own narrow interests and identity. And if we can do that, then we'll start to find the solutions to hate and extremism.